So I'm Phil Newman. I'm Gail Newman. And we built this Renaissance racket. It's a copy of a museum instrument that we make. And the racket has nine internal parallel passageways that are interconnected to form one long channel. And so they're surprisingly deep in pitch for such a small instrument. It's turned on a lathe. And this particular instrument is made of zebra wood. It has a double reed that you can see coming out through the pirouette, which is the, the top part of the instrument, the little hat he's wearing is the pirouette. The reed is made out of Arundo Donax, and it's shaved and scraped and cut and clipped so that you have two pieces of uh, reed cane that flap together. It looks a lot like a bassoon reed, and then it's attached to a tube, a brass tube, with wires and thread. So that the air you blow into the reed excites the air column inside the air passage, and that creates the sound. And then you can see the finger holes. Um, each finger hole that you lift up brings you one note higher. So I met Phil in 1973 at Mount Hood Community College. I was playing violin in the string orchestra, and he was playing a recorder solo with the string orchestra, and I thought, hmm, got to get to know this guy. And uh, We formed an early music group and uh, started playing together, and I encouraged her to try out for the Shakespeare Festival. The, it was while we were there, we just said, wouldn't it be great if we had rackets? And how are we going to get these? And uh, there were people making racket-like instruments at that time, but nothing really approaching what the museum instruments were like. And we wanted to get something closer. And so... An instrument building friend of ours said, if you really want to make money, build instruments. <laughs> and we thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, the reason this is such an important instrument to me is probably because it's the first one of any early instruments that we built. And I've always really liked Renaissance music. It has a, a counterpoint that's different from other periods. Renaissance music, it's still based on the same harmonic language as music that we're familiar with today, but it's, it's the roots of that. And uh, they had such a taste for unusual sounds that and those are the ones that especially interested us what what are what are those sounds that they heard that we're not hearing today and it was started with the racket and we ended up making all sorts of Crumb other horns and do sounds it started with people saying can you make me one